Okay, this is part two of our chapter uh, 11 on photography. We left off talking about this particular photo on page uh, 291 in our textbook and how the focus now was on not the object being photographed so much, but the photograph itself becomes the object because of the um, capturing of the reflection. So we're still talking about documentarists and kind of looking at what are they uh, trying to go for. And this is talked about on the bottom of 293. The best documentarists search for the strongest coherency of elements and this decisive moment. So they're trying to document things, but not just point, shoot, point, shoot. Um, they're looking for it to still be artistic, be balanced, have good qualities um, that draw attention to themselves. And so that come, is everything coming together, the light at the right time, the, everything in a good relationship to each other, uh, the, the expression, not just of the people, but just what's being expressed there. And you know the difference here, you know, there's someone who can go and, uh, let's just talk about wedding photography, big business right now, there are, uh, you can get family members and maybe they do a good job, but let's just say, okay, you get somebody and you say, you know, to basically point and shoot, right? Just do that. And maybe they could do a decent job of that, but you spend the money to hire a wedding photographer because not only will they record the moment, they are really skilled at bringing together um, it art artistically. They can, they document what's happening, but they know how to group, you know, the group pictures so that they're uh, maybe symmetrical or this, the, the grouping looks interesting. There's right capture of light. Uh, they'll get the image of the bride and the groom and the lights just coming at the right angle. And, and that's, that's what we're talking about here. Um, they can artistically put that together in a way that just someone who just points uh, a camera in that same direction and, you know, snaps the, the the camera there just doesn't capture all that uh, they have created that and put it together and then they work at getting a good uh, print of it good image of it and the example given in your book is on page 294 Dorothea Lang's migrant mother this is a very famous um, photo and it the moment in time is you know the depression of the 1930s and this woman and what she's going through and of course the the expression the despair the concern uh, on her face I mean she really is too young to have that many that many wrinkles and you know that in her face it's just all the worry but the composition uh, of it too that's what the documentarist is going for as an art form um, it says Lang stresses centrality and balance by placing the children's heads next to the mother's face, which is all the more compelling because the children's faces do not compete for our attention. The, uh, the mother's arm leads upward to her face, emphasizing the other triangularities of the photograph. And composing things in triangles is a really a common kind of design element and gives balance. And so you can kind of see that uh, there, the, the triangle form. Um, he didn't stage this, okay, or she rather, Dorothea, she didn't stage it. I don't know how you could stage it any better, and that's what makes it documentarists. It's not a portrait. It's not it's going in a studio and, and trying to make people look, you know, as good or better than they are and touching it up. Uh, this is how this woman looked at this time. She wasn't posing, and yet it was captured uh, in a way that would be like you would in a studio, you know, where it's balanced and the lighting is right and the composition is right. And so that's what a documentarist would do. Okay, moving on to our last section here, uh, the modern eye on page 296. And that's where we are. I mean, we we have a modern eye photography. We've seen photography. We've grown up with it. Now we can, you know, be photographers too. And we have access to a lot of different uh, high-end things uh, for a camera like our cameras now can 10 pixels and I remember 10 years ago or so two or three pixels was pretty high-end um, my sister and brother-in-law own um, they do an advertising business where they take pictures and they put it in a little publication that goes out in the mail uh, it's kind of like locally here mail south or any of those little flyers you get in the mail that have coupons and such well they do that and they take the pictures themselves and I remember at the time uh, my brother-in-law Curtis said we were looking for a camera oh all you need is three or four pixels well that was because you know anything else was really expensive now you can hardly buy one that has that few pixels the quality um, 
uh, on that has gone up. It's gotten less expensive because of the technology. And of course, selfies are really, you know, uh, popular and people can put together a lot of really nice photos uh, and put them on the web and what have you. So we're in this different era. We got different lenses, wide angle, different things that can manipulate the scene. Uh, I don't know what the technique is called, but they can. There's some kind of filter. Well, of course, Instagram lets you put these little things on it. Filter that makes it look almost painted. Well, the modern eye, uh, particularly what it talks about in the book, is this reaction against the rebellion against the earlier movements. They didn't really want to be pictorialists or documentarists, so they want to do something different. And that's that's kind of the way it's been with art: is uh, people want to do something unique and different and try different techniques and take these different uh, snapshots. So it says, as lower technical demands allows for cluttered composition and catches reality. So it catches reality. That's different from finding that decisive moment. So it looks for maybe uh, the, uh, not, a, not an important historical moment, uh, but just an everyday, but does it, you know, maybe in an artistic way. And I guess that's where 297 Los Angeles says it's gelatin silver print um, he caught a moment filled with energy and dramatic potentials with a little you know, footnote on it says there's action lighting implied drama all in this little snapshot you know just caught it and you got the lighting shining off there you've got someone in a wheelchair looking down you've got the 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 women of course this is in 1969 they're in high fashion and they're on the move and you've got uh, the people waiting on the side for the bus and all that put together and it's didn't demand a lot technically but it captured something there and he could shoot quickly he didn't have to do he says he they he would walk the streets with his 35 millimeter I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right Leica L-E-I-C-A with a wide angle lens preset at a particular f-stop at a specific shutter speed so he could shoot quickly without worrying about it that's that lower technical demand you got a preset and then just basically you know shoot uh, but you would get something pretty good uh, the last part, this is the last slide, I, I think, and that is uh, because of what could be captured, uh, there has been some controversy. It's not just in photography, it's in art, especially this century, and it started at the end of the 20th. And it focuses in, the example they have in the book is Robert Mapplethorpe. Uh, he says, arguably the best known young photographer in America when he died of AIDS in 18, 19, 1989 at the age of 42. Six months after his death, I'm reading from the bottom of 297, he became an even better known figure to the public because of an exhi exhibit, I really can't talk today, an exhibit of his work that was supported by the NEA. Well, um, he had taken photographs from uh, around New York of the homosexual community that he belonged to, and this is talked about more on 298, and is one of his photos that can be put in this book, is on page 299. It says some of his work portrayed bondage, sadomasochistic uh, encounters, and nudity, and it was very objectionable, and so Senator Helms from North Carolina tried to pass a bill that would limit the funding and uh, government funds that they couldn't support uh, anything that was obscene or indecent, including but not limited to depictions of sadomasochism, homoeroticism, the exploitation of children, or individuals engaged in sex acts, and so forth. Things that denigrate a religion, things that denigrate a, a people group. Um, it was a it, That bill was defeated. And it says, uh, federal support, though, to, in spite of the defeat of the bill, Federal support to public radio, public television, and public institutions um, has been really curtailed so profoundly as to jeopardize the career of dancers and composers and, and so forth. Uh, the, the book takes a little bit of um, a biased approach here in, in really advocating no political control because it's similar to the, it feels like the control that was put upon art by uh, dictators like Stalin and Hitler and uh, Mao in China. And so they say questionable legislation. And this is up for debate, and I'm not trying to make an argument either way. Uh, the, li the broader, more liberal view is that if it's artistic it doesn't and expresses humanity, then, you know, it should be good because, you know, 
uh, it's it's an expression of humanity, so almost anything would go there. But most people do have a sense of a boundary on that that uh, we don't really. And and then there's been art in other cultures in the past that have, you know, depicted uh, very graphic. Um, you know, scenes. They found it in Pompeii. There's in in, in different places in the Middle East, and uh, just go back and in, in, in Canaan, and, and there's just a lot of graphic things going on there that most of us in America and in Europe are just going, you know, that's not art to me. Um, it's pornography, or it's this or that's degrading. So, it's a very debatable issue. It's very something something very that much that a community has to decide what they're okay with. <clears throat> they took this the picture on 299 because it's you might have a problem with it it's not overtly um, you know objectionable to most people there's a black man with his eyes closed a white man up against him with his eyes open you could you could look at it artistically and there the subject matter you know is not highly objectionable like some of the other things mentioned and you could look at it as almost they talk about how the uh, heads are interpreted almost like they were sculptures uh, instead of personalities, and they're kind of personality-less. And I don't know what his, I mean, gives them names, Ken Moody and Robert Sherman. Um, <clears throat> I don't really know what he was trying to convey, per se, with the eyes open, eyes closed. That would be something to explore. But uh, because a lot of artists have been pushing the boundaries like that, there has been a lot of, you know, kind of pushback. Uh, things that have been presented in museums as being art, um, with toilets and just all kinds of, you know, and oh, I don't even talk about it. Uh, and then there's, you know, the issue of censorship. So people disagree. That's fine. And we're just going to let it, you know, rest with that uh, right there. But in uh, that, that's just kind of is the movement and where it is today and some of the things that are just right up to very, you know, recent times. Uh, you know, even Facebook will let you post an objection to something and uh, say you know you find that that content objectionable or whatever and that's your you know that's our right too to object um, to things that we don't don't care for all right well that's chapter 11 on photography uh, like I said maybe you see yourself as a would-be photographer and um, you can be a little bit more aware of you know, it as an art form and maybe find where you fit into that there's a focus on digital photography on page 300. We, I don't think I really have anything assigned for that. That might just be something you want to read uh, of interest to you. But going back to the uh, the discussion is uh, you know about painting versus por portrait or not portraits per se, paintings versus versus photography, and which one has a better chance of you know being realistic. And like I said, read that thing at the beginning of the chapter, and also watch the video to help you answer that project your theory and then there's a little um, photo project in the assignments where you collect and take ideally you take them okay I mean I guess you could find some but the selfies have to be obviously of you if you do the selfie collage and the other one is to take pictures and then you got to upload them and then have a little photo uh, a, f a poem that goes with it and make a collage that has kind of a theme now the selfie is theme is you but anyway their details are in there that's your assignments this week your quiz will be over this material but there's not a lot of terminology with this one like there was with theater and with music it's more just uh, historical and um, our focus is going to be try to interact and create some you know little photo collage ourselves on the assignment well, that brings us to the end of the video and kind of the explanation. And again, as always, if you have questions, try to email me early in the week to get some feedback back on that before it comes due.